Hello and welcome to another tutorial with me, Andrew. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the additive pipe modifier within the part design workbench. Sweeping, additive and subtractive pipe are similar to the loft modifier, which I did a video on last week, which if you haven't seen, click on the pop-out banner above. It's similar in the way that you can connect one or multiple sketches into a single solid or surface, however with this group of modifiers you can constrain it to a path. So to kick things off, I'm going to look at the additive pipe, which can be found in the part design workbench and found on the top tool ribbon here. Here I have a simple setup with four sketches and three different planes. We have two 10 by 10 squares on our XY plane, which are two separate sketches. We have a 10 millimeter diameter circle on our YZ plane, and we have a sort of horseshoe shape on our XZ plane, which passes through the center of our sketch shapes. So I'm going to click on the additive pipe and it's going to prompt me to select a sketch. Or I can select the sketch and click on the additive pipe. Either way, both work absolutely fine. We will then be shown this parameters box to the left in our tasks tab. We can see our sketch already in the profile box and isn't visible on our screen. In the path to sweep along box, you can see that it is currently empty. If you click on the object icon and click somewhere on our path, it will automatically follow the entire sketch. Equally, I can click on the add edge and select the edges individually. Just be aware, when selecting your path, it must be a continuous line with no branches, so you unfortunately can't create 3D pipes coming off at different angles in the same sketch. Within the section transformation, the drop down is set to constant, which is saying if we picked our sketch and picked our path, it will be a constant unchanged shape like you can see on the screen. For this, we want to set it to multi-section, because we have multiple shapes in different sketches. I click the add section, and I click on the circle. I then click the add section again, and I click on the square. Notice how I only clicked on one line, but it selected our entire square sketch. For this shape, I'm going to leave the other modifiers as they are, and I will come back to them in just a moment to explain what they do. When we click OK, you'll see that we have created a solid which has flowed along our chosen path. To explain the corner transition drop down, I have moved over to this sketch, which is a simple square alongside a line with two right angles. Clicking our square and clicking on the additive pipe icon, you'll see that the corner transition is already set to transformed, which is just taking our selected sketch along our selected path. Again, I'm going to click the object icon and click align on our path. As you can see, our geometry is a little bit messed up on the middle section. I'm guessing this is because it can't flow around the sharp edges. So we have two ways to solve this. Either create a path that allows the sketch to flow or select another corner transition. Right corner, which takes our geometry and turns it at a 90 degree angle and creates a sort of joint along our part. And then we have round corner, which does a similar thing, but adds a radius on the outer bends, which is half the size of your geometry. So here we have a five millimeter diameter square, which gives us a 2.5 rad on the corners. If you'd like to have a, a radius on the inner corners, it's pretty simple to do with a filleting tool. Now we'll take a look at the section orientation. Just like all the others, I'm going to start the additive pipe. As you can see, the orientation mode is set to standard. If we click on the drop down, we'll see there's four other options, fixed, frenet, auxiliary, and binormal. If we select standard and then select our object, you'll see this creates the shape on the screen. It stays constant to the path we've selected, in this case, a circle. If I then change the mode to fixed, this stops the selected shape from rotating with our path. So I drew my square in Y, and it's fixed to that direction, creating this geometry. Moving on to Frenet, this mode tries to minimize the twist in our sketch along a path. You use this if you wanted the orientation of the sketch to be exactly the same at the top and bottom of your pipe, like you can see here as I transition between standard and Frenet. And this is what auxiliary mode will get you. This one's a little more complex when it comes to creating geometry, it took me a few attempts to figure out how it works and to get a result that was presentable and explainable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on the additive pipe and that's gonna bring up our dialog box on the left. As you can see, I've got auxiliary selected in the orientation mode and I've got the object selected as the helix go around the outside. We've also got our center line selected as our main path. What seems to happen is, it takes our sketch, which we selected at the bottom, it flows it upwards for our main path, 
and then our secondary or our auxiliary path, which then bends or turns our actual geometry. So if I was to remove this or turn it to a standard, as you can see, it just gives us a straight up uh, piece of geometry. But if we select auxiliary and we've got our object selected, it creates this. Now I can also modify this. So if I go over to cancel and I go over to my sketch or my the sketch of my line, I can adjust how this is. So if I, if I put this right up here and click close, you'll see how it dramatically affects uh, the end result. If I then make it go back down again or make it in line with our uh, helix, you'll see how it creates more of a straight or stubbier uh, helix. Now we're going to move on to the binormal mode. And I'm just going to show you how I made this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly create a new document and I'm going to click on the drop down and set that to parts. I'm going to click sketch, click on the XY plane, say OK, and I'm going to grab the circle tool. I'm going to move that out, doesn't matter, just sort of rough, and I'm going to close that. I'm then going to click off the sketch, click sketch again, click on the XZ plane, and say OK, and I'm going to roughly sketch a square. Like so, make it a little bit bigger maybe, just so that we can see it. And again, I'm not going to constrain that, so I'm going to close. We should have something that looks a little bit like this. I'm going to go over to my model, select the square, click on the additive pipe, select the object, and I'm going to select the circle. And now this is what we've got as the standard orientation mode. So if I set this to binormal, you'll see that nothing changes. But if I start changing the x, y, and z coordinates, you'll see that things start to change. So I've just put a 1 in the x and a 1 in the y, and it creates something like this. Now, you can have a mess around with this. I think that's probably the best thing to do uh, because I still have no idea really what this does or what we can actually use it for. Um, so if we stay, say OK to that, you'll see that it creates something like this, which is sort of the start of what looks like a Mobius strip. I've looked through the FreeCAD wiki and it doesn't really give much explanation. I found a few posts on the forums, but again, I feel that not many people know how to use it or have any use for it at all. The most I could get out of it was a twisted square around a circular path, which does look pretty cool. Moving on to the final part of the additive pipe, I'm just going to quickly delete all of what I've just created, including that one, and I'm going to double click on the circle and delete that. I'm going to click on the drop down here and click endpoints to rim points, and I'm just going to create a rough arc. I'm then going to grab the polyline tool, click on the arc, and I'm going to go up in the vertical and constrain that to the vertical. I'm going to close that, click off, and create another sketch. This time I'm going to create a sketch in the YZ plane, and say OK. And then I'm going to find the end, end point of our vertice, which is here, and I'm going to click end points and rim points again. Click roughly whereabouts it is, and I'm just going to create another arc. I'm going to close that, and as you'll see, we'll end up with this sort of uh, 3D path. I'm then going to create a circle that will then flow along our path. So I'm going to click on our center line, create a datum plane, set the pitch to 90 degrees so that it revolves itself. And I'm going to move this in the X of 20. I'm going to flip sides, and it should end up about here, uh, just on the outside of our first arc. I'm going to click OK, click on the datum point, click Sketch, and I'm going to roughly sketch a circle just along the horizontal and roughly near our vertex point. I'm going to click close, hide the datum point, and we've now got our sketches. Now I'm going to click on the circle, click additive path, and I'm going to click on the object, which is going to be our path along here. Now you'll notice that it hasn't continued it along our third uh, sketch, or our second sketch technically, our second arc. Uh, now if, even if I try and click add edge and click on the arc, it will throw up an error and it just won't work. So I'm going to cancel that, click on our sketch again, or hide our data point, click on our sketch, click additive path, click on our object, and this will create, again, our pipe. I'm going to say OK to that. And just like the additive loft, instead of having to create a face binder, and click on the face, click additive pipe, click on the object, click on our arc, and this will now create our 3D sort of pipe. So I'm going to say OK to that. And there we have it, a 3D sort of pipe which goes in three different directions. 
That will be all for today's tutorial. Hopefully I've given you another tool you can mess around with and make your creations come to life. I didn't want to try to include the subtractive pipe and sweep modifier, but I understand that this video is getting a little long, so that will probably be next week's video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Have an awesome weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.